and we're live. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mesa Public Schools Facebook Live Safe Strong Ready, Ready session this week. I am so thrilled to welcome two of our outstanding leaders um, from our junior high ranks. We've talked to elementary principals. We've talked to high school principal last week and this week. I am so thrilled to be joined by Dr. Tony Elmer from Carson Junior High and Miss Jill Benza from Shepherd Junior High, who are going to share with us their experiences uh, uh, through this COVID pandemic. They're going to help answer your questions around what your students can expect during our modified in-person time and any other questions that you may have, we're happy to answer. If you remember, uh, this week we started our modified in-person, which means that we have groups of students attending alternating days. We had, so we had two first days this week. We had, I called it group uh, first day 1A and first day 1B. And uh, our, our A students came, and that's not grade level, uh, our, but our group A students came on Monday and uh, they'll be back with us tomorrow on Thursday. And our group B students were here Tuesday and they'll be with us on Friday. With today being in a remote day with their teachers and time for teacher planning, which has really um, made for a good week of learning and opportunities for us to adjust and make adjust, um, any kind of modifications that we need to, to be to make sure that all of our systems are in place to support our students in their learning and to make sure that we are pro providing the best safety practices that we can so that we can keep our community safe. So today we're going to field your questions and we're going to start. I, I want to ask each of our principals to share a little bit about what this uh, transition to modified has been like and what what's going on on their campuses. So if you don't mind, Tony, do you mind starting with for us? Oh, oh, sure. Uh, Ms. Williams, I, first of all, thanks for uh, for having me on on the program this week. You know, we always love to tell our stories, um, all the great things that are going on, on our campus and and this year has been no different. You know, we've had uh, kids show up this Monday and Tuesday. You know, we kind of played Groundhog's Day on Tuesday with the first day with our group B students. But um, it was great. You know, kids got off the bus. They were all wearing their masks. Uh, uh, you know, we, we had an area for kids to uh, pick up schedules for those kids that needed to pick up schedules. Uh, um, they stopped and got breakfast. Uh, ended up, uh, some of them ate breakfast on the way to their first hour of class. Like, you know, it's kind of normal for some junior high kids. But um, our, you know, our teachers were around welcoming kids uh, into the room and on campus. You know, it was just just a great day to to see kids on campus again. So um, it was a good first day for both of our groups. Great. Jill, do you want to share a little bit about how it went at Shepherd? Sure, I'd love to. Um, it went really well at Shepherd. I I'll tell you that I walked into a math class during second hour and I got a little emotional because I was so excited to see kids again. Um, and I have shared with several people that my school seemed sad, that there were, we didn't have the noise at the school, we didn't have the sounds students make. So all of a sudden on Monday morning, we had all of that again, and it just felt so good. Um, I think for me, one of the entertaining things has been, um, we went to the one-way halls. So we are like streets, I keep telling my students, it's like a one-way street, you don't, you don't get to drive that way. Um, I'm confident that um, in the East Mesa area in four years, we will have great drivers because we are teaching them the rules of one-way streets. Um, so that's been really good, but we had a good day. Similar to Carson, we passed out um, our schedules before school. We figured out that um, one gate wasn't gonna work. So we switched to two gates um, to pass out our schedules on Tuesday. And um, we welcomed the kids back in, and it was was great to see them. Um, even if we just couldn't see their eyes, you could tell they were smiling and happy to be there. So it was a, it was a great first day of school. And then Tuesday was a great second first day of school for us as well. It was kind of fun to have two first days this week and and hear all the excitement um, through the the lens of our students and our parents and seeing the pictures on Facebook of first days for two days. That was, you know, uh, the silver lining is that there's a lot of celebration around returning to modified in person and having the students back in the buildings. Uh, Dr. Elmer, would you talk a little bit about some of the safety precautions and mitigation strategies that we've put in place in the buildings that your teachers are utilizing to help keep our students safe? You know, uh... So what we're doing, yeah, Carson, like, similar to what uh, uh, Ms. Benza said, is we've got some directional hallways. Uh, some of our hallways are a little bigger, and, and so we've put a center lane in those hallways and, and so that kids are walking to the right. You know, so, so I agree with you, Jill. When, when they get a little older, you know, they'll have a better sense of direction when, when they're driving. Uh, but uh, we've got uh, hand sanitizing stations all around campus. We've got uh, adults stationed at bathrooms to make sure that, we don't have too many students walking into the bathrooms at one time. We're limiting the number of students in there. 
um, are in the classrooms, our, our teachers, uh, you know, we've, we've there, they've got hand sanitizers, um, site, hand sanitizing bottles there for students to use uh, at the end of class. Uh, you know, we're spraying down the, the desks, the tables and, and students are helping us out, you know, as they, as they wipe their table, their area so that it's ready for the next group of students that are going to sit in that area. One of the things we're able to do is, is alternate where kids are sitting at in the classroom. So, you know, if kids during first hour are sitting in um, a certain, certain desk arrangement or table arrangement, and then in second hour, it's the opposite arrangement. So we're minimizing the number of, of students that are sitting in, in each seat in each area, um, just to kind of help with some of those safety precautions. You know, students are doing a good job wearing masks um, in the classroom. And um, yeah, I've noticed a few students that have stepped outside to take a mask break whenever they need it. Um, teachers are doing a good job at, you know, making sure that those needs are met with students as well. Ms. Benza, will you share with us, what are you doing if students don't follow the rules? What if, what if they're not wearing a mask or they're not maintaining physical distancing? How do you handle that? Um, absolutely. You know, I just say we've been really lucky. Um, I think one student yesterday, we had to remind him to pull his mask up. Um, they've been really good. We had one student who had one that didn't fit um, the district requirements for masks based on what the board passed. Um, so I pulled him aside and talked to him and he was like, I brought a second one. I, my mom and I weren't sure. So that was really nice that he went ahead and put it on. Um, the other really nice thing is they've all been school appropriate. Um, and that was one of our concerns of what are what are the kids going to have on their masks? Are they going to have things that maybe we wouldn't want them to have on there? Um, so they've been really good um, at lunch. They all they're, they're junior high. They're junior high kids who haven't seen each other in six months. So they want to group up and have conversations and, and kind of huddle around each other. So what we did today is we went and looked around our outside space. We already had dots um, spray painted out there. I like to call my campus signs, dots, and more signs right now because <laughs> of all the health and safety things we have up. And we made more dots on the ground um, in, in kind of circles, if you will, so that they can stand and have a conversation. They can have their mask off, be at lunch, stand up, have those conversations, but still enough space around them that we feel like they're safe to do that. Um, and every student that we've talked to has been really, okay, I'll, I'll do this, I understand. I think for the most part, they're just so happy. And I, I think that um, Dr. Elmore would agree to be back in school, that they're gonna wear their mask and they're gonna do what we ask because they're in school and they get to see their friends and, and their teachers and all of those things that they've been missing out on. That's great. I really love the idea of that spaced out circle so that they could have that group feel, but not be right on top of each other. I think that's really smart. And it shows them what six feet looks like, right? Because sometimes it's hard to judge how far apart you are if you don't have some marking. So I really like that idea. Thank you for sharing that. That's really great. We've got some questions around remote learning and what people can expect if you are a remote student. Um, and one of the questions is my um, I'm, I'm just going to share the, the words. They've been told that they are not having any teacher uh, contact during remote days, and that didn't sound accurate to me. So could you guys describe what remote looks like on your campuses? And then I'll jump in and share um, some some mitigation on that end of the question on how to handle it. If it if it doesn't appear to be working that way, like the, like you describe it. So Jill, do you want to start telling what remote looks like from your campus? Absolutely. Remote from my campus looks very similar to what it looked like before. Um, the teachers know they need to be live at least two days a week with their students. Um, some of them are picking to be live with part of the class on Monday and part of the class on Tuesday to give the kids a little bit more of a personal feel so that they maybe don't have as many kids on the screen. They can have a smaller number um, and then they'll have work for them to do in Canvas the other days. So very similar to what we've been doing for the past um, six weeks, I guess. Are we about six weeks into the year? Five or six weeks? Um, so very similar model. Teachers will be live with them minimum of two days. Um, a lot of what my teachers are doing is they come live with the students at the beginning of the hour. And then um, if they don't have any questions, the kids can go into the work, but they'll leave their, um, their meeting open like this so kids can pop in and ask questions. So very similar to what we have been doing. So they will be meeting live with teachers during remote learning. Great. Tony, a similar experience at Carson? Yeah, you know, we, we changed it up a little bit. Uh, um, we, we changed ours just a little bit in the sense that uh, we did split our remote students into A and B groups um, as we've gone to modified in-person. 
And we, we still are expecting our remote students to uh, be logging into their classrooms w live with the teacher two days a week. Um, that hasn't changed. Uh, the, the times have changed a little bit. We, we wanted to match them up with their in-person uh, alphabet split as well. So, so we've got kids that are going to, uh, our A group students, um, they're going to log in uh, remotely with their teachers on Mondays and Thursdays. Um, and then our B groups are on Tuesdays and Fridays, just like our in-person kids are. One of the things that's a little different than what Jill explained, what they're doing at their campus is uh, we're, we're doing some live streaming. So as those remote students log into their classes, they're going to be able to interact with their teacher in the classroom as well as the students that are here on campus that day as well. So, um, so we've got some community building that, that we're doing that way and, and interactions between our remote and our live students um, going on at the same time. Uh, we did also, uh, for all students, not just remote students, but on Wednesdays, uh, we are asking all of our students to log in Wednesday morning at 915 uh, for our advisory uh, time. So we did, uh, we did move that to Wednesdays. So when we come back in person full time, that will also be on Wednesdays. So we're, we're, we've started uh, to put that practice in place right now as well. I'm glad you mentioned that because that's a follow up question that someone has is around how often can a modified in person student when they're at the on their home days expect to interact with their teachers? Um, uh, do, is it three days just completely online or do they still have some contact with their teachers? And I think it's different at each campus. So Tony, do you want to touch base on that a little bit? And then I'll throw it back to Jill for for how it works at Shepherd. Yeah, I will, because because um, with with the schedule that we're doing, we've, we've got some flexibility there. Uh, let's say a, a, a remote student, you know, logs in on Monday and they're struggling with what it is, what, you know, with one of the classes they're learning. Let's say, you know, it's in their math class. You know, they can talk to the math teacher and 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 work it out with the math teacher to log into that same lesson on Tuesday for the the B group students, you know, and and maybe that second day they're going to uh, they'll, they'll catch something that they missed. So there's some flexibility to be on um, on with a teacher more than the two days that are, are scheduled. Could I do the same thing if I'm an A student and I struggled and I was at school on Monday, but I, I, I really would benefit from hearing it again. Could I log in on Tuesday and be live with my teacher again? Uh, for sure, you really could, yeah. Okay, great. Jill, what about on your campus? Sure, so at Shepherd, our students are live the days that they come to school with their teacher. Um, and then their home day, they're working on stuff on their Canvas page. Um, some of the teachers have done videos that the kids will watch while they're working independently on cam on Canvas. Um, not all of them have done that. But then every Wednesday morning at nine o'clock, we do are doing a homeroom, which is new to us this year. Something we implemented uh, when the school year started. And we have this morning we had all of our students do it, whether they are modified in person or remote. We kept them in their first hour doing something. And during that time, we've done um, SEL, the social emotional lessons with students. We've done um, some grade checks with students today was kind of a touch base of uh, how are you doing? We made a lot of changes. Where are we? What questions do you have? That type of thing. Um, so for sure, students will be live every Wednesday, no matter where they are with their teachers first hour. Um, and then our modified in person students, um, when they come in, they'll see the teachers and when they're home, they're doing uh, more independent work on campus. And and. Um... I would just say that if you are, if your student is struggling to connect with their teacher on their remote day, so they are a modified in person and they're a, a Monday, Thursday student, but they really need help on Tuesdays and Fridays, I would encourage you to reach out to the teacher and say, hey, is there a way that, that we could um, work something out so that my student could have a little bit of time to ask the questions that they're struggling with? And then for sure, you could expect uh, at all of our schools that there is time set aside on Wednesdays for that, for those one on one interactions with students. So I, I know this is a big change for us and we're learning it as we go. And just as Ms. Benza said, they met today as a staff to say, okay, what worked, what didn't after two days, we're just gonna get better at it and make sure that we are meeting the needs of students. So for those of you who have students who are struggling um, with no contact with their teachers on their um, on the days that they're uh, asynchronous is what we call it, or their remote days, I would encourage you to reach out to the teacher first to see what kind of mo modifications we could do mm -hmm. to support the student learning. Is that fair hey, for Molly, both, both campuses? Molly, yes. Uh, one thing I'd like to add to that on, on Wednesdays, and, and I think Jill's, Jill's school is the same way with, with office hours. Jill, are you guys doing office hours on Wednesdays too? We are. We're doing office hours every Wednesday. Okay, so one of the nice things for parents and students is, is you know, they don't have to, to 
worry about trying to get a hold of a teacher if it's on a Wednesday that they want to meet mm -hmm. with parent with the teacher. You know, they can simply go to those office hours in, in the student's Canvas course and select the time that they want because our teachers are going to be available all day Wednesdays. And, and if a parent selects a time they want to meet with a teacher, that schedules it on their calendar. So, it, it, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's an easy way for parents to, to set up an a individual time uh, with a teacher. Yeah, I have, a, I have a question from a parent that says, what should I do if a teacher is not using Canvas? So I'm going to take that question because I think it's an easy answer. Call the principal and say, hey, the teacher's not using Canvas. How can you help us? Because the expectation is that teachers are using Canvas. So if that's what you're running into, that should not be a barrier. So we want to make sure that you address that um, immediately with the school leader. So please call the principal. They will help you walk through that. Mm -hmm. um, so. We've done a lot to get ready, right? We've we've purchased a lot of safety equipment. We've done all of these things. What 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 does it look like on your campus? What what's new? What you said signs and dots, <laughs> signs and spots, Jill. But so so what does that mean? Signs and spots. What it, can you just ex explain? Kind of what the atmosphere looks like on your campus a little bit, and then Tony, we're going to come to you. Absolutely. Um, so on our campus, we you know the district has been great. You guys have provided us with so much. Um, so we have signs up that talk about how to properly wear a mask. Um, we have signs up that talk about um, how to properly wash your hands. Um, we have new hand sanitizer stations. They're really nice. Um, people on my staff will tell you that every time I walk by one, I use one um, because you never know what you've touched, you know. <laughs> um, we have um, these little bottles. I don't know if people can see them and they're refillable and they're in every, they're in every classroom office, um, countertop space, they're all over the place um, and they're refillable. I keep telling my staff, don't, don't throw them away. Um, but we added a few more things. Um, we created huge signs for our one-way arrows. Um, we created some signs to kind of talk about which doors to use. Um, like I said, we've spray painted some dots outside on the ground. Um, and it, so, it, I mean, we've, we've got it pretty much covered. If there's something they're looking for, you know, we have it. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't, you don't walk through and say, oh my gosh, the school looks like they're afraid of something. They, we've put them where they should naturally be. We've put them on bulletin boards. We've put them, you know, the hand sanitizing stations outside of bathrooms. Um, we have new how to wash your hand stickers in the bathroom. Um, and they're, they're really nice. So they look nice in there. Um, so it looks, it's very professional looking um, and it looks like it goes. And it's funny because some of it, I think, why have we not always done this? Like I love hand <laughs> sanitizer, it's always in my bag. Why have we not always had these in the hallway? Um, and to get our students used to some of those changes, uh, my team lead Becky and I made videos that we shared during homeroom one day of, oh, there's a hand sanitizer, this is how you do it. Just so the kids would get used to seeing those. So there's a lot of that um, around our campus. That's great. Tony, you know, similar? I can, I can echo, you know, just about everything that Jill, Jill said there. Um, you know, I think the, the kids and the parents appreciate those things that we have out and, and are ready, you know, for kids to come back. You know, for me, one of the, one of the bigger worries was, okay, was our surrounding lunchtime for us. And, and we've normally, historically, we've had two lunches on campus and, and we're, you know, putting 550 students uh, through the lunch line uh, during each of those lunches. And, and this year we we added a lunch and and so we are added two lunches we have four lunches this school year and and uh um it's been neat to see because we have you know the six feet distancing signs uh in the lunch lines where uh, where we have students line up we changed the flow in the cafeteria a little bit with uh, working with our cafeteria manager and and when kids come in they um they'll line up in, uh, around the perimeter of the wall and, and into the uh area where where they get food at but uh, our, our lunches are usually the biggest social time uh, on a junior high campus. And, you know, now we've got, our, I think our biggest lunch of the four is, is 70, 71 students and the others are 50, 60. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, that's a big change for us, you know, cause we, we fit two kids to a table, um, you know, we're able to spread kids out and, and uh, uh, but like, like Jill said, they still want to uh, hang out and talk and socialize and, and, and talking to them about, you know, uh, the parameters around that, you know, and kids have been great. Uh, they, they've been great these first two days with it. Uh, but other than that, you know, the, the signage and so that we, we wanted to make sure the campus looked as normal as possible and, and uh, with, with some of these safety precautions. And one thing I'm, 
really appreciative more so now uh, than when uh, when uh, superintendency helped us out with uh, the water bottle water bottle fill stations that we got the last couple of years. You know, we have a couple of those on campus, and now kids are able to take their water bottle and 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 fill it. You know, rather than using the, um, just the normal water fountains, the drinking fountains. So so those are being used more um, at, at this point this school year as well. That's great. You know, we do that for uh, for to be. Uh, environmental conscious and then it has an added benefit of being able yeah. to be used during this time and make it a very safe way for students to refill their bottles. So what a great example. I, I would be remiss if I didn't take the opportunity after you talking about lunch to give a shout out to our food service department and the way that they have continued to make sure that our community and our students are fed throughout this pandemic, whether it be from the, the shutdown in the spring when um, things just shut down and they had food service going two days later for, for all of our families and then all through the summer and then through the transition this fall and the, the the great thing that's happened this fall that, that happened about two weeks ago is that they um the federal government extended the summer lunch program which means all of our students who want to eat in the cafeteria can eat for free and they just pick up their food and i'm sure that helps with your lines it moves a lot faster when you're not doing the money thing or the code uh students can pick it up and it gives them a little bit more time for that social that they've been missing um but they but everybody can eat so if you're if you weren't aware of that and um you're not taking advantage of that please do that's a that's a big advantage that we have right now and we'll have it through uh december so we're excited about uh the federal government extending that food lunch program um a parent has talking about grades and trans the grades that have transferred and uh, some hiccups we've had there. So I'm going to start by saying that hasn't been as smooth as we'd like. But we but um, so can you guys talk about how you're mitigating that transfer that so here's what happens if a student changes classes, the grades, the grade book doesn't automatically dump into the new teachers class classroom grade book. So how are teachers adjusting for that? Can you guys talk about that? Sure. Um, one one of the things that uh, we're doing is, you know, I've asked teachers to uh, keep a backup uh, copy of their grades, and and since the gradebook in Synergy, uh, uh, the student view and the, the student portal and the parent portal, I mean, that's that's really the official um, record keeper of, of grades. You know, we've asked teachers to transfer the grades from Canvas over to Synergy, and that's that's where we want students and parents to to look for uh, where where their grades at, uh, assignments that are missing, and and, and uh, anything that has to do related to grades. You know, there is some confusion because they're doing the work in Canvas, and we're transferring that over to uh, to the grade book in in the parent view and student view there in Synergy. Um, but uh, you know, one one of the things with asking teachers to back their grade books up is when when kids transfer to a different class or there's a schedule change. You know, there is historical view in, in Canvas that, that they can find it. Um, it's just, it takes a little bit of time. Uh, so I know that's been a, you know, like I think most schools, you know, that's been a, a, a topic that has been discussed with, with students and parents and teachers and, you know, and, and, and we'll continue to make sure that we keep working at that so that it's easier for kids and parents on that, on that end. Jill, similar, similar things yeah. happening on your campus. Yeah. Absolutely, very similar to what they're doing over at Carson. Um, and our talk about this has been a lot of, um, you know, let's let's use some grace and care as we move forward with this. You know, we have we've done a lot of schedule change changes, trying to balance classes and get things where they need to be. It's none of this is the student's fault. So why we would want to give them the benefit of the doubt and move these over. And in one case, um, I talked about with a couple teachers. You know, they have the student has an 88 in this class. Start them with an 88 in your class. Why? Why wouldn't we do that? You know, this this was a change we made. That let's just move that over. So we've talked about how to make those changes. Um, so it's definitely been a big discussion over here in our area. And then again, similar to what they're doing at Carson. Right. It's not a. It wasn't an automatic change. So the teachers are having to do that that work. And so we've asked all of our school leaders to to navigate these conversations with the teachers. So hopefully, if you don't see that change happening, that you reach out to the teacher and they'll be familiar with these conversations because it is happening. You see two principals talking about it's happening on their campuses, but it's happening at 85 schools. So please know that we are working through that. Um, again, it wasn't an automated tra gradebook transfer, but the teachers are taking those grades, adding them to their current grade books, and making sure the students 
students maintain their grades because they worked hard for them and they deserve they deserve that uh, work. And I like your your phrase. Uh, what was that? Grace and what? Grace and space. Is that what you said? Did you forget what you said? Grace, it did. Grace and kindness or grace and, <laughs> grace and kindness. All of it works. <laughs> All of it works uh, to, to give. You're right. This wasn't students fault. This is this is uh, something that we need to work through. So I'm really happy to hear that we're, we're we're actively working on that. And and I know that's happening across. You know, you shared some some campus improvements um, from our area assistant superintendents. They shared some things happening on elementary campuses. And I just have to share with you the the creativity of our elementary principals. Um, instead of having spots, um, one of one of the the mascots is a so they have bears where the kids line up and they know that they stand by a bear or a gecko at one of our other schools. So uh, the creativity flows and, and, and keeping kids physically distanced and, and showing them those spacings is important. As I said earlier, sometimes it's hard to know how far apart six feet is. And so giving them some, some guidance about, okay, you're supposed to stand this far apart is helpful. Um, some parents are asking about how could they know what it looks like on campus because they're not allowed to visit. Are you doing any kind of open houses or virtual tours or parent teacher conferences? Anything like that that parents can see what to expect on what they what their students are experiencing on their modified in person days. Um, I'll jump in here first, um, Dr. Elmer. No, but that's a great idea. So thank you to that parent who <laughs> um, suggested that. Um, I have learned how to make a fun little video um, during all this time. So I think it's a, a great way, you know, we've talked about how can we, how, how can we help parents feel comfortable? And I'll say as a parent in the district, you know, my child attends a Mesa school. I was comfortable sending him back because I'm aware of the signs and the hand sanitizer and how they're cleaning the classrooms, all of that. Um, and we've talked a little bit about that and, and then, you know, keep telling our parents, well, this is what we're doing. But it would be certainly easy um, and entertaining to make a quick video of what our hallways look like, what some of the things look like, send some pictures out. So that's a great idea to share. That's you know something at my school we could do um, in our Sunday message. But I think that's a, a great thought from parents, and it's definitely it, it's on it's a forefront. I mean, it was for me as a parent and as as an educator. How are we going to keep these kids safe? So it would be good for parents to see that. I like that idea. So thank you, parents, for asking that. <laughs> That's a good one. You know, you I, and, and I'd really like to see those videos of you, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, I, um, I, you know, it, it is a good, uh, it is a good idea. Or that one of the things we did that uh, kind of goes along with this is uh, last Saturday. You know, I, I came over to the campus. We we sent out a message to our parents and uh, last week, and and I opened the campus for three hours and. And we let parents and students uh, come and walk campus so that they were, had some familiarity of, of where things are at. You know, those new seventh graders, you know, they're mm -hmm. always lost the first day of school on mm -hmm. campus. And, you know, and it at least gave them a chance to walk their schedule with their parents or, you know, or, or older brother and sister that, that came with them. And, and so parents got to see some of the stuff that, you know, that is visible, uh, you know, out and around campus. You know, they didn't get to go inside of a classroom or the cafeteria or anything, but, but they at least got to see, um, you know, the layout of the campus and, you know, signage and, you know, the different things that we've done around campus. Yeah, we, we did something similar. We have um, hosted our seventh graders. We had tours for them last Wednesday and we did them in small groups and we walked them through, showed them where the classrooms were, kind of showed them the traffic pattern of our school. Um, and we probably had 150 seventh graders participate which we were more than pleased about. Um, and I had one young lady and I saw her at school the other day and, and she was videotaping the tour. And I said, what are you doing? And she said, well, I wanna review it before school starts. Um, so I did do a little crazy dance for her. Um, so that, <laughs> she might've posted that to TikTok or something. So, but I do like the idea of getting parents to see what it looks like. That's fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, I question here that I'll handle it asking about with, with the food service being the way that it is, can they accommodate food allergies? And I would say reach out to your school principal and they can get with their cafeteria manager to get you an answer on that. I, I'm not sure about that, but I know that the principal um, works closely with uh, the cafeteria managers on their site and they can answer that question for you. So that would be my advice there. And then um, at one last question about uh, electives at the junior high. What kind of physical activity are you, are you, um, are you modifying that at all? Are they still able to take PE and the things that they normally do at the junior high? Jill, do you want to take that one first? Sure. Um, we are still having our um, in-person electives. 
Um, and actually our remote students are doing them as well. So our PE classes are doing PE. Um, they're just doing different PE than they're used to. I know they're looking at doing things like yoga, when it cools off, going outside and doing some different things out there. So we are still having that. We have a dance program and um, my dance teacher is super sweet. And she asked about, um, can they take their shoes off? Can they dance barefoot? And um, I really, how I looked at her for the longest 30 seconds and said, yes, I think they can. And we got her the cleaner. And so she cleans the floor really fast after because she said she does have them stretch and touch the floor and stuff. So we clean that in between. Um, so we are, we're doing that. Um, we're, we um, have put our choir kids in our beautiful new auditorium. So um, thank you to the people who voted to pass our bond a couple years ago. Um, and that was updated this summer. And so she's got, you know, her kids spread out to every corner of that and they have their masks on and they're doing things. So it looks a little bit different, um, but they are still doing things um, in those classes. Thank you for Jill for that. And, and, you know, so you know, at our high schools, it's very similar and in our elementaries, it varies. Um, so they, they get recess and they get to play outside um, during their recess times. And we give at the, at the elementary also frequent mask breaks that are outside and um, they're doing PE in a modified way, but they still get their physical activity twice a week with their PE classes. So um, know that we are aware of that and we continue to look for opportunities to make sure kids are getting off their wiggles because that's an important part of the school day is that physical activity. Um, two, two last questions that I'm going to just field. One is around um, how many people chose to go uh, modified in person versus remote. District wide, we averaged about 60% of our PEF families chose to come back in modified in person and 40% decided to stay remote. But I'll say to you, when you're a big district like Mesa, that's not the same at every school. So that's the average for the district. But at one school, you might have as many as 80, 85% of people who wanted to come back in person. Um, at another school, it might have been as low as as 40 to 50 percent. So it just depends on the school and but as a district at average, it was about 60 to 40. And the last question that we'll take today before I give you guys final words to say to our, cra our crowd is when, when are we going to go to five days? <laughs> and that's the million dollar question. We all would like to know, have a crystal ball and be able to see that. I will tell you that we continue to watch the metrics. The metrics in Mesa and Maricopa County look really good. Um, people are doing what we asked, which is wear their masks and, and stay socially distant and wash their hands. Those things make a big difference for our numbers. So if Maricopa County data continues to trend in the right way, I would say that um, we will be able to transition sooner rather than later into the five day. I don't have a date for that yet, so I can't, I can't give you a date, but please know that we're watching that closely and feeling very encouraged by the numbers that we're seeing and, and hopeful that that can happen soon. We know what a difference that makes for our children for that, for that regular schedule of coming to school. So I'm going to give you both a chance to, for final words. If you if you could share anything with the community that's watching us on Facebook today, what would you want them to know about uh, school right now? Jill, go first. Okay, I'll go first. Um, I think, you know, no matter what it looks like, masks, signs, dots, it's, it's still school. And um, kids are still learning. And, um, you know, I've told my community our, our kids are resilient. And it is. It, it feels good. You know, this week has felt really good. I have felt more like an educator this week than I have felt in six months. Um, my teachers feel that way. So it just, it feels good. It feels right. And no matter what choice you've made for your child, whether it's modified in person or remote, it's the right choice. It's the right choice for you. And, you know, we are in such a time where, where people get, you know, frustrated so quickly because I think emotions are so high, but I always want to say to people, it's okay. You know, it's okay whatever choice you've made. Um, your students are going to learn because what I know <clears throat> is that the, the teachers at my school and the teachers across this district, they want your students to learn and they want our kids to be happy and they want them to be successful and safe and healthy and all those things. So I'm excited to have our kids back. I'm excited to build community with our remote students. We're trying to find ways to keep them as part of Shepherd. You know, having virtual club meetings on Wednesdays, anything we can do. And I would say if you have questions about your your school, reach out to reach out and ask because um, we probably have an answer. And if we don't, we'll find it. Um, and if you have a suggestion, we're open to them, you know, so um, and then thank you. Thank you for the support that we've received from the community. It really means a lot to us. Thank you, Tony. All right. Well, I can just echo everything that, uh, that Jill just said. 
you know, uh, uh, parents, you know, we appreciate you putting your trust in us and taking care of your kids. You know, for me, I always look at these students and, and as though they're my own and, and take care of them just as if they were my own. And, uh, and so if they're, if you have your kids here on campus, we're going to take care of them as though the, that they're our own and, and we'll do everything we can to make sure that, that they're safe. And, and, uh, you know, it's a partnership, uh, with us and, and, uh, and we, we appreciate that partnership and, and we respect it. And, 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 you know, we were, I was asked a few weeks ago as we're getting ready to start school, you know, to type it or say one word, you know, uh, about how I felt and I put excited, you know, and, and I, I'm always excited to start a new school year, you know, no matter how it looks, I'm excited. And, and, uh, and we're going to do everything that's right by your kids, you know, to make sure that they're learning, whether they're here on campus or they're at home doing remote, you know, we're going to do everything that we can in our, that's in our power to, to make sure that they're learning one way or another. And we might not always get it right, but we'll, we'll make the changes to make it right. You know, and, and so, so thank you for, uh, for sending your kids. Thank you for keeping your kids home. We, you know, we, we'll do everything that, that we can to make sure that, uh, that they are learning each and every day. Thank you. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank both of you for being here with me today. Your, your knowledge and your firsthand expertise in these areas helps our parents see what's going on day to day from a perspective that, um, uh, you know, the district folk can't speak to because you you are living it with your teachers and the students in the building. So thank you both for being here and thank you families for watching with us today. We so appreciate, uh, um, as they both said, uh, your kindness, your grace, your patience with us. Uh, you know, the messiness of a beginning of a school year. We've done two beginnings of school year now. And so uh, we continue to learn and grow together. And we so appreciate that you're making the best choice for your family and trusting us with your students. So I would encourage you, if you have questions about our Safe, Strong, Ready plan, to visit our website, and we're gonna share with you some information about where you can get more information. We have frequently asked questions. And as always, um, the best person to reach out to as both uh, of our principals just shared is the principal. If they don't know the answer, they'll find the answer for you. So we encourage you to do that so that you can have the needs of your student and family met. Thank you very much for being here with us today, and uh, I hope you have a great afternoon. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Go Cougars. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.